Hi guys, it is a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise over here in uh, East Bumblefuck, New Mexico over in the United States here on this gorgeous Friday, March 31st, 2017, but we're actually on the phone to Norway today for installment three of the Humpty Dumpty Tribe interview series, and today we're talking to an old buddy of mine, Torstein Vidal from Norway. I wish Torstein would, would, would talk to me more publicly in, in, in our public comments. He's He's been talking to me for years, mostly privately, but we're going to uh, listen to Torstein today. He's a man worth listening to, and he's going... I'm just going to pretty much let him introduce himself, and then we're going to dive into uh, what Torstein thinks about the situation on the planet. So, Torstein Vidal, welcome to Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and just introduce yourself to the folks, and we'll start this conversation. Take it away. Oh, shit. Uh, thank you, Ando. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I was also uh, once a normal guy, you know, working low-pay IT jobs, some TV and newspaper and magazine jobs, steady long relationships, but determined not to have kids, like you. All right. Uh, um, always a strong proponent of uh, logic and science. I guess I tried to deny the existence of money and brute force in the world for the longest time, just dismissing it as stupid. Uh, then I guess at the time of the COP15 climate summit in Copenhagen in 2009, I realized Big Oil and Big Bomb, or let's just call it Obama for short, uh, was indeed a vast force to be reckoned with. Uh, and in some sort of last-ditch desperate countermeasure, I started work on my Pute app, as in compute or dispute, and it's a super ambitious attempt to settle things once and for all based on pure logic. So a pretty naive project there. <laughs> so, so we're, we're, you're, you're going to solve you're going to solve this problem with logic. I. Uh... So in a way, that was the opposite of Facebook, you know, where the same stupid battles have to be fought every day. <laughs> Same already settled science or logic. Uh, and the, the Pute app was, of course, doomed to fail, uh, and not due to technical difficulties, but human nature above all. You know, big oil climate deniers. Uh, yes, I do know those guys. Yeah, they would, they would just refuse to use or accept uh, the app. End of story. You know, it's no use if it's only the good guys uh, referencing it, it, you know? So you started with. I'm trying to get a fix. So, it, you you just really got into this in 2009. At what point would you say you started down the the this rabbit hole of what's going on on this planet and started figuring out things weren't exactly like the mainstream media were painting them to be? How long have you been down here with us? Yeah, I think uh, you know the failure of the Pute app that I was working on. Uh, and with it uh, came the loss of any hope that it would ever come to our senses. Uh, that was sort of my entrance to, to the collapse or dream of civilization scene. Because, you know, all the money interests and the brute force, the, the military interests, and absolutely no, no focus on, on common sense or reason or science, uh, you know. so. So I, was, I had to give that up, so here we are, 2017, and you can say what you will, but it makes no difference whatsoever. Well, let's uh, do, give, give us your, your summation. How, how would you describe life on planet Earth here and one-fourth of the way through 2017, and, and, and it, how do you describe the situation in a nutshell? Well, it's kind of like... Um, What's it called? That other dystopia novel? Um, not that, not 1984, but the the other one. Brave New World. New well, World, yeah. It's like, it's like you can say what you want, and and you, yourself, you know, you, you're not even stopped at the airport, or you're not banned from YouTube, you know. It's like uh, 
the, the plan is to just drown you in in just every every clueless moron uh, other <laughs> piece of information and video uh, out there. You know, there's no use for censorship, really. So, what would you? How do you describe the? What do you see as, let's say, the top three threats facing uh, civilization uh, and this planet? How is your reading of the handwriting of the wall? Um, I think, um, you know, I've, I've been studying, after I left the, the Pute project, uh, I've been uh, studying sort of the only hard currency or only hard facts of, of the climate debate, which is the, the steady collapse of, of the, um, the Arctic, the sea ice. Uh, and so that is kind of sort of undeniable proof that we are going south, if you understand. It, literally, uh, I, I think literally the North Pole is sliding to the south, um, not figuratively and and literally. Uh, so your your special interest is well, living where you do uh, would be the would be the collapse of the Arctic sea ice. Yeah, it's uh, because it's um, it's sort of a. As Paul Beckwith says, it's it's not a local uh, problem. It's uh, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. So it's like we have very good data for what's happening up there, and the consequences are global, and it's very very short term. I was quite shocked, you know, a couple of months ago when I when I realized uh, how short term it is that we lose all the sea ice in 12 months of the year, you know? So. When do you predict we're going to see an ice-free Arctic? Sounds like you do, a, you do a lot of reading on the subject and studying it. So what's your call? I, there's two different uh, ice freeze. One is the summer ice free, which could happen, you know, any, any time, like this summer or next. But the, the much harder question or the much uh, more, you know, Civilization collapsing question is when we lose the winter ice, and uh, for now, you know, with just the just the losses we've had uh, over the past year and the past two years, just the average losses we've had in ice volume, uh, those trends point towards twenty four and twenty five. You know, then that's are, are you saying twenty four and twenty five years out, or the years two thousand twenty four and two thousand twenty five? I'm afraid this is the last thing, the 2024, 2025. So, so that seven or seven or eight years, you're looking at the handwriting on the wall. You're calling a a, a permanently ice-free Arctic in seven or eight years. Yeah, but that's on, that's only if it's linear and if it doesn't speed up and everything. Uh, yeah. Everything tells us it's going to speed up. You know, it's not going to just go. You know, steady decline like that because uh, you get stronger and stronger feedbacks and at the end it's you know just some ice flake here and there and it's um, it's gonna be rough so, so who are some of the uh, your references who, who do you study and, and listen to and recommend to other people just starting down this rabbit hole who would you recommend they they tune into for more on this. Uh, I've created the um, Arctic Sea Ice uh, group on Facebook, and I, I encourage people to go on there. And uh, oh, so you're the so you're the the one who created that. Okay. Yeah, I created it in, in the last days of January this year. So it's about okay. About a hundred uh, members. All uh, right. But, uh, to answer your question, I, I'm not. Uh, I try not to be so people-centric, uh, so I, I recommend, at least for the Arctic stuff, I recommend just looking at the data uh, yourself, you know, that's what I do, because I'm an anarchist, and I don't, I don't trust fucking anyone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, just finding anyone to trust. 
So, I mean, everyone always wonders, uh, I, I hate just to default to this, but it just gives a yardstick. So are you part of the, which side of this, uh, of this ramping up Paul Beckwith versus Guy Ferson, uh, Guy McPherson debate? Are, are, are you falling, are, are you falling on one side or the other for, for these guys escalating battle between the two of them? You know, I'm, I, I know both of them, so so I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna answer your question. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I'm the same way. It's uh, on one hand, it's it, 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 it's somewhat humorous, but it's really sad to see to see these two guys uh, slugging it out like this all over Facebook and YouTube uh, when when we all need to be working together. There's so there's so few of us who who get it. Uh, I think. The, maybe the uh, explanation is what uh, you alluded to the, uh, the other day on, on YouTube. You know, you said that uh, people love drama and people just grasp for the drama because then they don't have to t think about uh, the collapse and the demise of civilization. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's an element to it. Well, let, so, but you're, you're not with... Uh, well, I won't put words in your mouth. Are you or are you not with uh, with guy that we've got? Let's let's call it ten years. Do you, do you see us being extinct in ten years? Is it this bad, or you think we're going to come through this to the other side? Yeah, I've been I've been uh, YouTubing and thinking a bit about that, and uh, I consciously um, uh, choose to focus on, on when we lose civilization because that's much easier. You know, uh, to, to, to point out uh, and then the other very hard thing is like when will this species or the other species uh, go that's very very difficult because you have like you have 8000 meter high mountains in Asia you have uh, islands in the Pacific you have uh, Arctic areas like uh, Greenland and Canada you know it's like uh, the planet isn't uh, all London or New York. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole planet won't react in the same way. It will be, uh, I'm sure, decades between when when one part goes and the other part goes. So, I, I think uh, civilization or uh, society will will collapse at some point in the next decade in most parts of the world. But I think uh, I'm pretty sure. Some people will be able to hold out, you know, until yeah. mid-century. So. Now, are you are you like like me and Guy and and Derek Jensen? Are you a promoter of uh, the collapse of of global industrial civilization to save the biosphere, or are you more like Paul Beckwith and thinking it's something that we should try to fix and and save at this point? I'm pretty sure, you know, I haven't done that many magic mushrooms as, as you've been talking about. <laughs> but in, on some of those um, trips to the to the woods, I've got pretty pretty clear messages from the other critters living out there that they wouldn't mind civilization civilization just going away. You know, they wouldn't mind us. They they look at us uh, as uh, Demons, you know, that's, that's my interpretation. But the other animals and, and plants, they look at humans as demons when we are out there in the woods. Well, I, I have to say the, uh, the, the, the photograph you sent me is, I, I, I love the irony of, uh, now uh, we were talking before we started recording, I, I, I know why. We had to take this beautiful birch tree out, but that is, uh, that, that's, I, I don't know, that was just a, I, I just enjoy the irony uh, <laughs> of, of the, when you're talking about the animals and plants uh, thinking of us as demons. So you're holding a, what is that, a giant bow saw and your buddy's holding an, an axe there. But, That's uh, right. And we, we struggled for hours to get that one tree down. You know. <laughs> so, so at least you didn't use a chainsaw or a or a bulldozer to do it. Not to, to use a chainsaw, but uh, it uh, was defunct. You know, it wasn't. You know, it was some kind of uh, mechanical error. 
there don't don't you love it when uh when the chainsaw won't start i uh i have to admit i love using chainsaws i i go berserk when you put a chainsaw in this old eco nazi's hand but uh, i always get a chuckle when uh when I get all prepped to go out there in the woods with my gas sucking chainsaw and it will not start, there, there's nothing that, you know, that makes you feel humbled than a gas powered chainsaw that will not start while you're cranking and cranking and cussing it <laughs> and the tree is just sitting there laughing at you and thoroughly enjoying your temper tantrum. Ugh. Anyway, I want to talk uh, uh, about, uh, obviously, one of the big debates uh, that I've certainly been uh, talking about, because I don't know, as, as I admitted just a couple of days ago, is the whole methane bomb thing. Uh, I, I mean, you hear, you can go on, this, is, this debate is one, no matter where your position is, you can go on and, and research it yourself, and whatever your preconceived notion is, you can find scientific reports to, to back up. So I'm sure you have studied this issue probably more than me. So I'm curious, where do you fall on the, uh, along the, the methane bomb debate and uh, how it's going to impact abrupt climate change? And, and when, if you believe it is, when do you think it's going to blow? Yeah, I've, uh, I've kind of placed it on the timeline between now and when we have uh, no winter ice, no winter sea ice. So I would say any time between uh, September this year and uh, 2020, pretty much, we will have uh, this huge, you know, like 50 gigaton or whatever, uh, plume of, uh, of methane from the... Uh, what I call the, the East Bumblefuck Sea in, <laughs> in the yeah. Arctic, uh, uh, East Siberian Sea, uh, because that's very shallow. It's like up to 50 meters uh, deep, and um, you heat up that, um, that water in the summer, and it also heats, heats up the uh, seabed, and then you have a thaw. And then kaboom. So, so you do not agree with, uh, with, with Paul's latest. Uh, he seemed to buy that USGS report, hook, line, and sinker. That... It's not really, it's really Paul, you know, because uh, he even said in his uh, YouTube that this is, I'm just relaying this USGS report, you know, uh, and he did that in four videos or something. And, you know, USGS, the, the geological service, that's directly under... The president. So, you know, if you elect the wrong president in your country, uh, the USGS will be at his service. You know, so it's like. But that time. report was written under Obama, not under Trump. That that was that. The no, actual the writing time, of that no, report predated the, Donald Trump, I believe. What's the difference? You know, and there's the writing now that. Uh, Donald will have a hard time to, to get the uh, oil and gas production as high as uh, Obama was able to get it. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Well, let's no. talk about uh, over there in Norway. What is the. How would you say. So I, I hear the, the approval rating for Donald Trump in his own country. Uh, I, I think one poll shows 36% is. You know, it's the worst. Uh, he is the least popular president ever since they started polling. Where would you, if they took a poll of Norwegians today on uh, supporting uh, Donald Trump, what do you think the support level in Norway would be for Donald Trump? You know, Norway is a very naive uh, country or a population, so it will probably be like 60, 70, 80 percent uh, against against him just because our mainstream media are just going crazy uh, uh, about being anti-Trump. Uh, you know, they don't have news anymore. It's just anti-Trump, you know? Well, yeah, that's, uh, you know, he's doubled my workload. I mean, I just did, you know, every Friday now. You know, it used to be, as I say, it used to be the easiest day of the week for me to do my ecological meltdown roundup ramp, but now I have to do two 
entirely different. One is just is all Donald all the time, and one is every other threat against the planet other than Donald Trump. It's it, it's uh, he completely. I mean, here in the mainstream in the mainstream media, uh, any environmental news, I would say Donald Trump dominates about seventy percent, if not higher. Uh, and then even when you go on over to Alternet to their environment pages, about seventy percent of the environmental stories on planet Earth have the word Trump in, in the headline, and and so I don't know what I don't know what to do about it. it, it do you ignore him? Well, don't you think don't you think this is kind of uh, done on purpose for some reason? I don't I have no clue why, but. It seems it's a big, you know, um, detraction, or what do you call it? Uh, Distraction. Distraction, yeah. From everything, you know, it's like, jump, 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 jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, enough about, enough about that guy. Oh, I know what I wanted to, uh, to, to uh, mention when we were talking about the... Uh, the uh, the methane bomb debate. Now, the other big debate that I see, which which I believe is going to turn in once we get our minds a little bit off of Donald Trump, uh, is the whole geoengineering debate. Where do you do you think to, do you think it's a good idea? And whether or not, first I want to know, do you think? Uh, and and I'm particularly talking the solar radiation management. A is it a good or bad idea? And and B, whichever way you think on that, is it ever going to happen, or is it complete techno utopian uh, pipe dream? Yeah, I would have to go a bit uh, easy or careful here, but you know, because you know, um, if uh, you or I wanted to, for any reason, do the opposite, you know, to, to get it to heat up faster. To make civilization go away faster, <laughs> uh, some people in 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 America would maybe view that as ter terrorism. If you want to take out the entire planetary system, you know. So, um, but uh, to answer your question about um, spreading sulfur and stuff to, to to shut out the sun, isn't that what they did in the, in the Matrix in the movie? You know, they tried to beat the uh, the AI, the machines. Yeah. You know, they tried to block their uh, solar cells by, by fucking up the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. you know, sort of got there. So, uh, I don't know. But um, I don't think they will have time. I mean, if they, if they are working on these timelines from the silly IPCC climate panel, they, they think they have decades of, or centuries to fix <laughs> you know? so, so maybe they will be, be fooled by the, their own, you know, crap science. But they they think they can start this in twenty twenty five or something, you know. So, so then it did not, never happen. Do you think some some either rogue country or, or crazy billionaire like Bill Gates or whoever it ends up or Elon Musk or someone? Because right now there's nothing. There's no laws to prevent apparently you or me from blowing off an anthropogenic uh, volcano if we can think about it. Do you see I any danger of that? I'm, I'm I'm talking about in the next two or three years, or do you uh, think uh, it's so in its infancy that there's that's nothing to worry about? I think you have to remember, Hambone, uh, that uh, uh, these things will have to be done every day every week for decades so it's like if let's say that you know everybody uh, seems to like to hate putin let's say that uh, vladimir putin you know would release a lot of uh, sulfur to shut out the uh, sun over the arctic uh, then you could just you know move in and make him stop doing that because uh, this is something that you would have to renew and do do all the time for decades well, I think it's not just decades. It's, it's more like millennia. Yeah. So, so that the, once the, you the start, moment, you can't the stop. The moment you stop doing it, you will get a five degree. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, 
putting the toothpaste back in the tube. You know, it doesn't work. I mean, once 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 you open this can of worms, brother, you you better uh, you better have one hundred percent confidence in it. So, but it doesn't sound like you think geoengineering is going to save this civilization from collapse. I don't. I don't hear that anywhere in your voice. Uh, I think. Uh, I think our goose is already cooked. Geoengineering or not? Okay, I we're good, good Laura. We're already over twenty-five minutes into this interview. You. You emailed me a couple of days ago, and I want you to hear to. to I just want you to take off. You were talking about the climate deception plan, or remind me and 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 uh, explain to our listeners what what your uh, what that's all about. That you were writing me about the the climate. What is the climate deception going on on this planet? I think it's uh, to cut it short. It's um, the whole uh, UN climate panel. Um, it's not what it's cracked up to be. Uh, I think it's a clever deception to, to pretend that uh, the UN is going to fix everything. Uh, and I think if you study it more closely, it goes very much hand in hand with the uh, big oil um, long term planning to be able to pump and sell oil and gas forever or until the whole thing collapses. So I don't think it's uh, proper science. I think it's politicized, just as the, the deniers would say, that the IPCC is politicized. And uh, you have, uh, actually you have governments uh, censoring uh, the few scientists uh, who are actually doing a, a good job there. Then the, the government of Saudi Arabia or America can just say, no, can, can we delete that chapter? I don't like that graph. Yeah. So, that's, that's sort of the working of the IPCC. But I think it's a huge um, deception uh, to control the whole uh, climate debate because everybody believes that the climate panel is doing a good and excellent job, but they're not. They're clearly not because they, they tell us that the, the Arctic sea ice in summer will last until uh, 2080 or 2090, some bullcrap like that. So they're clearly not uh, doing an honest job. And I'm going to take a wild guess that you do not have much faith in the Paris Climate Agreement keeping uh, global temperatures from rising uh, under 2 degrees Celsius between now and the year 2100. Is that a safe bet? Yeah, pretty much. But you know, we will always have, have Paris, you know? <laughs> Well, you mentioned it sounds like you, you are pretty convinced, as I am, that, uh, that global industrial civilization is teetering on the, 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 uh, the brink of collapse and, and possibly the planet, right? But behind that, so just, you know, I always like to talk with, with, with people. I mean, how is this affecting your life? I mean, how do you you know, being down this rabbit hole and just realizing how hopeless this situation is, how do you keep, what is your secret from just, from just, you know, falling into just an absolute existential despair, depression? What do you do to keep from that happening in your own life? I think uh, my solution is um, the old solution from Schopenhauer. Uh, a philosopher who lived in the 1700s, I think, and uh, so it's it's uh, actually to to um, do some form of art, uh, you know, paint or make music or something. In my case, I'm I'm a writer, uh, and uh, when I focus on that, it's like I'm writing this book, and you get some kind of filter between yourself and, and reality, you know, because you are going to finish that book, and uh, you're trying to, to make this crisis into some kind of plot in a book. Uh, so that was his, his advice, um, Shop, Arthur Schopenhauer, and I think that's a good one. Mm, I think yeah. that's working for me. Uh, and when it comes to how many years I've been down the rabbit hole, I think I already realized in my teens 
my late teens that this uh, whole society was unsustainable, couldn't last. It's just trying to grow and grow on a finite planet. And also my fellow Norwegian eco-philosophers, there were four guys who were pretty known in Norway at that time. And they were, they were also very much anti-civilization and uh, pessimistic about the 21st century, but optimistic about the 22nd century. <laughs> That's what you know in the next century after this one. Yeah. Does that? Do you think that figure starting to get a whiff of this knowledge in your in your teens? Did that play in your decision to uh, not to not be a breeder? Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was the um, the second of the philosophers I checked out, Petr Sapfe. He uh, made a big point about not breeding in his own life and in in, in his philosophy. And he uh, basically wrote the book on the tragic, which is about the, the tragicness of, uh, of uh, humanity, basically. You know. Who is that writer? Tapfe. He's a pretty, How do you spell that? Uh, Z-A-P-F-F-E. But it's not translated to English or any other language. So it's oh, really? I know, I've never heard the name. He sounds like someone I would like to read, for sure. That is great. All right. Well, we have passed the critical. Uh, I, I can't believe how thirty, how quickly thirty minutes just went uh, just went past. So, uh, did, let's did, wrapping it up. If if you had to get a a sixty second, if this was the mainstream media interviewing you instead of Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and you had sixty seconds to uh, get the the message that you want to get out to the planet here in twenty seventeen, what would that sixty message sixty second message be to the people? Okay, then I would say that if you are a young green person or a young environmentalist and you want to know what's going on on this planet, you should uh, listen to Hand on Little Tail on YouTube. <laughs> Because he's, he's, the real, uh, he's the real bank for the buck, you know, he's the real deal. Well, that's your advice. I, I sure appreciate that. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I, I. I am quite honored that that would be your, your your advice to the planet to to listen to anything this old eco Nazi former real estate agent house flipper has to say. But uh, that's what we're doing here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Torstein is is, is I, I'm just trying to open this debate that nobody is having. And uh, I do certainly appreciate uh, you being part of it. And as I say, if you would like to start commenting more, a little more publicly, I mean, I, I enjoy our private email conversations, but cer you certainly feel welcome to, uh, you know, to enter the public debate on the comments whenever you want to. And uh, keep up the good fight, amigo. Yeah, thank you. I will try to do that. Okay. All right, I'll st stick around for a minute. And I'm just going to sign off here. So anyway, guys, that was my old buddy Torstein Vidal weighing in on the situation on this planet. And feel free to comment and let us know what you think. I mean, I'm going to wrap this up. And uh, I still haven't done gotten to my manure tea on my garden, so that's where I'm heading for this third interview. Bye, guys.